Hey guys, welcome to Third Stall Garage. My name is Doug. This channel is about the restoration of a 1966 Mustang convertible named Vin. This is episode 22, where I will be installing a new lower cowl and upper cowl. It is the last step in reassembling the front of the unibody of this car. This channel is about this restoration. Uh, it's also will hopefully help you in your installation, but also I want it to be a place where people can share comments, ask questions, and hopefully it helps you with the project that you've got. This also proves that the biggest thing you need to tackle a job like this is a sense of willingness. Uh, there's so many resources out there. Uh, if I can help you at all um, through answering questions, feel free to message me, email me, thirdstallgarage at gmail.com. That would be great if you want to help the channel. Please hit subscribe and hit the thumbs up like button. That would be fantastic. Or leave a comment below. Stay tuned and see how this goes back together. Thanks for being part of Third Stall Garage. I'm in the basement right now getting ready to uh, I'm prepping the lower cowl to get ready to install I'm in the basement right now because it's a little warmer than in the garage uh, there is heat in the garage but it's set low it's like 21 degrees out right now um, I have the lower side already covered and uh, it was primed from the factory cleaned it and painted it in a satin black um, I am just using a rust-oleum um, satin black um, just to protect it uh, I don't envision driving this car in the rain um, but I do want a protective layer of paint on it on the upper side of the lower cowl this is where rain would come through um, the upper cowl the water flows down goes past uh, these vent hats and would flow out right here. This is classic where they have a rust problem that, you know, this is spot welded around the edge here and water can get under that lip. Now the lower lip does curve up, so it's not going to get into the Mustang, but that water stays seated in there and this area can then rust. So uh, I've got it clean. It doesn't look it, but it's been wiped down. And I'm going to put seam sealer over that, and then I will coat it in a layer of satin black as well. You can see that I've got a weld along this edge here, and a weld along the edge here. When I installed my lower cowl in between my kick panels, it 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 wanted to force the kick panels out and I couldn't get things to line up. So I had to make a relief cut here, spread that, and then weld it, do that on the same side. So my steps now will be prime this. So everything has one layer of primer. Second thing is to seam seal around this area. And I think I'm gonna flow the seam sealer out here just to protect this water path. Um, and then paint everything in satin black. And then the last step will be to bare the edge here and cover it in um, weld through primer. 
and then it should be ready to install. All right, the primer is dry right here in the corner. And uh, it's time for the seam sealer. It's the first time I've opened the can. Looks a little thick. I'm using brushable seam sealer uh, Evercoat, part number 10365. Um, see how it goes. There's a little bit of uh, oil that looks like it's separated on the top. Um, so I'm going to try to stir it a little bit. I also don't know. It says skim coats in 10 to 15 minutes. So I thought if I had some on my stirring stick, then I could touch that and see if it's dry before I mess around with touching it on the cowl. Uh, this is pretty thick, a little hard to stir, but worth doing well. Happy New Year to all of you. I think it is January 2 here in Michigan. I hope your 2022 is off to a good start. Or if you're watching this sometime in the future, whenever it is, life is good. God is taking care of you. Uh, I'm pretty good about that. I don't see any signs of inconsistency anymore. Um, a variety of people use different brushes. Um, some people use the cheap chip brushes that you see, you can get at any of the big box stores. Some people use the small little acid brushes for like putting flux on for soldering. Um, I am using a foam paintbrush. Why? Because it's what I had here. So, I'm going to work on putting this on. You will not be able to see this when I'm done unless someday, 150 years from now, for whatever reason, Somebody tears this apart and has to do it again. Lord willing, it will not happen in my lifetime. Hopefully when I'm done, this car is much more water and weather and everything resistant than it ever came from the factory. So basically I want to get it Nice ceiling layer around where this hat seam joins the lower cowl um, so that there's no way water can get into that seam. And then I'm just going to follow it through and out the edge here. That does not get welded and that is where the water flows. You want to kind of force it into the seams fairly well, but also you don't want to leave too many ridges and streaks because water could collect in those. I'm also just going to fill in this low spot here, which is potentially where water could collect. I could envision the car parked. So this is the driver's side. Let's say it's parked on a hill sideways and gets caught in the rain. I could see where 
there's temporarily a pool there and I'm being way too nitpicky about this. I feel really good about that. Let's do the other side. Sorry, I'm moving the camera on my tripod. Maybe I'll edit this out. Maybe I'll just let you get dizzy. I actually hit the camera on the ceiling. Professional filming and editing here, folks, at Third Star Garage. Nothing but the best for you, my viewers. seam sealer is dry um, time for a coat of black rust-oleum satin protective enamel uh, if you haven't tried these before rust-oleum makes they're available at the hardware store just a little handle it clamps on and uh, it just makes it a little easier to spray get control also avoids getting drips all over your finger I recommend them time to spray In previous episodes, uh, more uh, the most recent episode, I put the fender aprons in. You can see how I did that. A couple episodes before that were about squaring the engine compartment, uh, making sure that everything was set front to back, side to side, square on the angles. Same thing for the f uh, firewall and the kick panels on the side. There are a couple videos about that. So. If you're interested in how I did that, please check out a couple of those other episodes. Today's episode is going to be about welding in the lower cowl and welding in the upper cowl. Um, it is all set to go. Um, I use these sheet metal screw holes to locate it during the testing and you know fitting part, and I've had it in and out many times. Um, Screw holes do tend to largen over time, so they're not perfect, but you can definitely get them in and out a half dozen times pretty easily. They do make uh, an object called a Clico, which you can buy on Amazon, which you drill an eighth inch hole, and it's a little pin that goes through. So I don't have those, but if you wanted to, you could do those as well. So uh, I had the lower cowl out, uh, cleaned it off, scuffed it, painted it really well um, with a Rust-Oleum satin black uh put i think three heavy layers on just to give it a good thick layer um set the cowl back in located it marked all of the spots i want to drill holes or where i want to put plug welds pulled it back out drilled 65 holes then uh bared the back side of all the metal mainly to get rid of the burr that the drill bit throws as the drill bit comes through I'm going to spray that surface with some 3M weld through primer. There's the part number. Um, I found it, uh, I've heard some stories that it's hard to weld with, but I have not had any problems with it. I also one time um, was cutting a piece of metal and my cutting disc was coming through from the backside through the metal. And usually when that happens, you can see it glow red and the, the paint that's on it bubbles away and, with the weld through primer, it, it, it never melted, never bubbled uh, until the wheel came all the way through and then obviously ground it away. So I'm going to put a layer of weld through primer on all of this before I reinstall it. I am also going to bolt on the uh, windshield wiper motor and the windshield wiper arms because then those will come up through the holes in the upper cowl and just be one more point of just making sure it's all located correctly. Um, I did grind off the primer because this had a black primer on it and then sprayed 
uh, weld through primer on that as well. So time to locate it one more time and hopefully the last time. The cowl, lower cowl is in and ready to go. My plan is to start in the middle between those two clamps and work my way from the middle out going plug weld by plug weld. Um, so then I'll work my way along, get to the edge here and work my way up to the end of the line here. Uh, I'm most concerned about making sure this lays down real flat and smooth so I'm gonna be real methodical with clamping any one of these down and it should, should lay down nice and smooth and flush, but I'll massage it with a hammer or whatever I need to to get it to lay flat as I weld it in. Pull that screw out. Here I did have one hole that I drilled, accidentally marked a hole there um, and the metal behind it stops right next to the hole. You can almost see it. So I'm gonna to have to weld that one shut. I'll use my little copper backing plate, stick that in from behind through the glove box to make sure I don't blow that hole through. So I have three clamps here holding this. I can just get a clamp on this part of the A pillar through the hinge hole. Um, my plan is these three just kind of hold this stable as I start in the middle and work my way out. That way, if, if this has to slide at all, it can, but I do want it to stay approximately in place. Uh, this is the lower cowl. The upper cowl has will come down here and then comes up, and it will have two series of holes that I put in it. One will get spot welded through onto the lower cowl, the other get plug welded, spot welded through onto the frame of the windshield. And that is this V right here. So I will have to drill holes here and drill holes here. It's important as I mark those to miss these little half circles. I don't know why they're there, but I don't want to end up with a plug weld right on the edge of that hole. So I'm excited to get welding. So the welding is done. I uh, got a little excited and didn't videotape all of it, but did all of the plug welds, ground them down, smoothed it. Um, then I primed it and weld through primer. And I am really happy with the way this laid nice and flush, uh, nice and tight all the way around. Same thing on the other side. Yeah, I'm just really happy with that. Um, here is the upper cowl. It is about ready to go in. I did make one mistake. I got excited as I was welding this thing in and my sheet metal hole, for, the hole for my sheet metal screw I accidentally welded it up as I went around. So I was doing all my plug welds. I'm like, oh, I got a plug weld in here. I can pull this screw out. I'll quick weld that hole shut. Suddenly I don't have that sheet metal screw to locate my upper cowl anymore. So what I plan to do is obviously I want it to sit well and sit against the sheet metal or sit against the windshield. Um, I'm gonna use my windshield wiper shafts just to make sure that this thing is centered and that it's not, you know, off to one side or the other. Earlier I talked about how there are two sets of holes. I will drill holes along here and that will plug weld to the bottom of the windshield and I will drill holes here that will plug weld to the lower cowl. And 
And again, I'll get those to lay as tight as we can. I've seen some people who weld the upper cowl and the lower cowl together on the bench or on a sawhorse in order to make a cowl tank. And then they set it on here and then weld it all the way around as one piece. And I've seen other people who are doing it the way I did where they do the lower cowl first, weld it in, grind it smooth, and now weld the upper cowl to it. I don't see a reason why. I've seen it work both ways. I couldn't come up with a reason why one was significantly better than the other. So uh, this is what I'm working on. So my, my project now is to make sure it's exactly where I want it. I'll put some clamps on, then I'll go around with my Sharpie and I'll mark where all the holes are gonna be and I'll take it off to the bench over there and drill it out. Holes are marked. 129 holes to weld in the cowl. Uh, a couple things that I did, I had marked where those U-shape spots were in the lower cowl and I had said I didn't know what those were for. Those definitely align with the marks on these little tabs that hold the windshield trim on. Um, so I obviously wanted to avoid those. I also staggered these holes, um, partly because it just gut wise that seemed wise, but I also wanted to, um, I don't know, it seemed to make sense to stagger those a little bit. The other thing that I did is, is my gap between all my plug welds is about an inch and a half. Um, when I got to this wider spot, um, I did this on the lower cowl too. I, I put more plug welds in on kind of a diagonal, almost like it was a bit of a truss. Um, and I did that for a couple of reasons. I've got extra width here of material to deal with. This is also where my export brace will, uh, bolt to, and I want that to be nice and strong. And I thought having extra welds in here also spread out a little bit more uh, would make this more like a little I-beam or something across here. Um, I split my difference on my two windshield wiper X, I don't know, those shafts. If you look at this one, I don't know if you can see it. It almost looks like the cowl needs to go just a touch to the left um, or the, the windshield wipers do. And on this one, it's just off a little bit the other way. So I feel good with it being kind of centered the way that it is. So they're marked and it's time to take it off, put it on the bench and start drilling. 129 holes later. It is ready. I uh, drilled all the holes, <clears throat> sanded the underside of them uh, just to get rid of the burrs, and then uh, used weld through primer on the underside and have it all clamped in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven or twelve clamps holding it in place. Uh, again, I, I used these the shafts of the windshield wipers to locate the upper cowl to make sure it was centered, clamped the rest of it in. Then I pulled the windshield wipers out and you can just get a small clamp in both of those holes there, which just help holds it. I was worried about these plug welds. Um, mine sit very nice and flush. Uh, focus, there we go. So there's no gap between my upper cowl and lower cowl. I was worried about how that was gonna sit because I really don't have much of a way other than this clamp to kind of pull those together. Um, but I'm really happy all the way across that that lines up. I have a little bit of a gap on this side, but I will start welding the middle, work my way this way. And once I get to these holes, maybe even this one, then I can massage this metal so that this lays down against the windshield. This lays down flush here. Same thing on this gap here. I can get that to lay flush. The rest of it, I'm really happy with all the way around. I'm gonna start welding the upper cowl to the lower cowl. 
I wanna get that done first. I will start in the middle and work my way out both ways. Once that's done, then I will probably work on the windshield welds, middle, working my way out, and then start on the firewall welds, starting in the middle and work my way out. Um, I think that's the way I feel most comfortable doing it. I'm gonna leave clamps on so the end should stay flat as I do it. I'm not gonna videotape that because, I don't know, watching me weld a little hole 129 times, I think you've got better things to do with your life than that. So uh, let's see how it turns out in a moment. All right, the upper cowl is in and welded in. I'm gonna show you things in a couple stages and talk about two things. One, getting the metal to lay down flat. And the second one is the fact that I'm welding with flux core uh, with a flux core welder and that may be changing. Stay tuned for an upcoming video about flux core versus gas shielded. But uh, this is what it looks like immediately after flux core welding. Haven't cleaned any of them up at all a bit. Very ugly, lots of splatter, um, spatter, not splatter, spatter. And, but they're good welds. They're strong, uh, they're burned in well. Um, so the steps will be Weld it, which is done. Two, wire brush it uh, with something like this, chucked in a drill to clean all the slag off the top. Three, step three will be to uh, knock the largest part of the weld off with uh, a grinder and grinding stone. Four will be hit it with a little pneumatic belt sander. Step five will be to hit it with, this is a little pneumatic belt sander. Step five will be to hit it with my little angle grinder to blend it in, and then it'll be done. Um, on this corner, which is I wanted to show you before I welded it in, you can see this is sticking up a little bit. I've got a bit of a gap here, and I've got a decently large gap there. Uh, it actually was much worse than the other side, but what was important to know, because you may run into this too, is the whole middle part of the windshield just laid down really nice and flat. Super easy to clamp them in with these type of clamps, like such. Um, but on here, I'll pinch it down. I will also use um, a large hammer and a chisel and knock it down this way, pound it this way, pound it that way. Just keep massaging it until I get all the welds where I want them, then I'll weld it in. This side, the driver's side, was actually much worse. Um, sorry, my cord's in the way. Um, I had close to uh, three-eighths of an inch gap right here. And so welded this in, welded this in, and then just started pounding the metal down, which helped pull this nice and tight. Once I got this nice and tight where I wanted, I put in one, two, three, four, five, six welds here, then massage the metal around this radius, then put these two plug welds in, and then was able to stretch this metal here to get this to lay flat and put that weld in last. And once that's cleaned up, I mean, it looks horrible right now with all the slag, but once that's cleaned up, it will look great. So let me uh, finish welding the other side and then I will wire brush it. So easy to climb through a car. I'll wire brush it and show you what it looks like and then keep on working on cleaning. All right, cowl is cleaned up um, just with a wire brush and chucked up in a drill like such and grabbed a rag and a little Windex to wipe it clean. Uh, so this is what flux core welds look like cleaned up. I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. I mean, they're, I'm not a professional welder, but I think they're clean, they'll be solid. If there are pinholes that are left behind, I'll weld those shut, uh, grind them down and blend them in. As Joe Daddy would say, I'm happy with that. All right, next I'm gonna take my uh, electric four inch angle grinder with a grinding disc and uh, I'm just gonna go through 
and some of these are a little stick up a little more than others so instead of wasting all my time with a pneumatic belt sander i'm just going to hit them with a grinder to take the head off of it and then i'll finesse it as i get closer to it like this one for example this one sits up a little high i, I put a little extra weld down on there um, same thing with this guy here so i will uh, decapitate that before i try to blend it in here's what it looks like after the next step with the top of the welds ground off you know i read online a comment that now rings a whole lot more true i tried to get good at welding and what i did was i got good at grinding um 129 welds and they're ready to get hit with a belt sander and then finished up after that only found one that had a little hole in it so i tacked that full and um happy the way it's coming out look at this i used the belt sander smoothed it all down it's a little die grinder with a disc to clean it up after that and i am really happy with the way that this came out um it feels so good to have all of this solid compared to the rusty, crappy, cobbled together mess that it was when I brought it home. Goes without saying, but really careful when you're cleaning up. You don't want to grind off these little tabs. Or you'll be really sad when you get to putting your uh, stainless windshield trim in. I am happy and I'm calling it a night. All right, back out here at the weekend. And I am excited to show you the final completed shot of the front end of the Mustang. Cowl is in, the fender aprons are in all the way around. New side panels, new firewall, tons of grit on the ground that I need to clean up. Um, if you remember back, if you watched the whole series, um, I had to cut this joint right here. That is welded back in. I can reach down and pick the whole thing up with one hand, which feels good because I've been tiptoeing around it, trying to keep everything square. And uh, I'm happy. This feels great to be this far. All right, that's gonna wrap up this episode. In case you're wondering what's next, here's a clue for you. Thanks for being part of Third Style Garage and uh, click like, add a question, comment. If you've got any, um, hit subscribe. Thanks guys, have a great day.